I was just counting how, how many items I would see in five minutes uh, with slowing down. 140 in five minutes. It's a lot. Part of this is from rainfall, but part of this is uh, from sewage. Yeah, it smells really bad. Yeah. We've been to locations that probably most of people have nev never been to. When we go to these places and we talk with, the, with local people, I'm always amazed by how much information, how much valuable information you can get just talking. So everybody being shown in a way, stop in the gully and those things. So we block up the, the other side and come up and, and, and flood, over, flood over some houses over on the other side too, through the block with the block of debris. Debris block. In, in Jamaica, and particularly in Kingston, we have um, man-made channels, gullies, that are used to, to channel runoff from our urban areas, away from these urban areas. In the case of Kingston, our gullies are really paved over natural drainage channels that there's a network of them across the city. And these, have, these are plagued with the problem of, of solid waste getting into these gullies and these um, solid waste material ending up into the Kingston Harbour. This is the, the problem that we face. When we look at the Kingston Harbour and you, you, you speak about the problems of, of, of solid waste in the harbour or along the coastline, we begin to think that the problem begins and ends in the water. It doesn't. It uh, is connected way inland by these gullies. And this is the problem that we're trying to tackle here, the land-water interface the medium in which they, 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 they get from point A to point B. Uh, gullies also pose um, transitory storage areas for these solid waste before they end, in, end up in the harbour, but after they've been discarded. It is a chronic problem here in Jamaica. One of the issues that you guys would have seen on your, on your field excursions is where the garbage debris piles up. These are not necessarily caused by the people who live around those areas. Them do all this, not we, because we, as one local community, couldn't do all of this. All of the stuff that you see here now, the bottles, the bags, the garbage, all that, all from uptown. It really looked bad, including me. I throw garbage in there because sometimes the garbage truck doesn't come and pick up the garbage. But if we can work together and get the gully cleaner. But if you guys come and clean, we can jump into and help you clean the gully too. Alright? And it would be good to keep the gully clean because it's a lot of bacteria. You see, that's how we, we keep the garbage keep on continuing the gully. People keep on throwing it in there because there's no truck. They're not coming, so what are they going to do? What are they going to do? They're going to throw it in the gully. Because sometimes the rubbish truck don't go around. So when the rubbish truck don't go around, they throw the rubbish in the gully. In terms of what can be done, are there many, many different solutions? I think, I think what we're working on here uh, as, 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 in our relationship here is, the, is an engineering type solution. It would be a hard solution to devise mechanisms for physical cleaning up, um, the logistics network of waste disposal and, and, and carting away material to proper landfill areas and collection centers and so on. You can literally create and devise solutions that can address the problem physically in terms of skips, waste disposal systems, trucks, frequency of trucks, capacity of trucks and so on. 
And that's going to have to get to the hearts and minds of people. That's where public education, that is where our community engagement programs are going to be very critical. We have seen in lessons learned from other projects that if you really change the behavior of the children, it can trickle down to the adults in their lives because then they'll go home like, well, mommy, why don't we throw this in the bin? Or I, t I was told we're supposed to recycle this. And yeah. <laughs> that kind of pressure helps change the behaviors of the adults around them. Yeah. Uh, you have organizations like the Grace Kennedy Foundation that have not only um, experience in working with, 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 with inner city communities and, and, and trying to get them on board with different enterprises and initiatives, but they also have a, a, a credibility. And that's why partnerships is so important. Um, it's, it's not one solution is not going to cut it, two solutions is not going to cut it. It's going to be an all-in approach if we're going to get a, 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 a total and sustainable um, solution here. I feel that this is going to become a challenge now. So uh -huh. the way I've seen it before from the drone shots, everything looked manageable, kind of very tailish. But now standing here, I'm really happy we came over because we need to engineer around some, some issues. For now, the idea is that we uh, start with a pilot phase one. We call it phase one, and that is the goal for this very year to verify and demonstrate our technology. We aim to do three gully mouths in the Kingston Harbor, close to each other. Uh, they're different gullies, different profiles, different bathymetry, um, different amount of debris that we expect to float out, so it's a valid test. We test, we learn, um, see if there's any improvements and from there we try to, uh, we, we aim for uh, upscaling towards uh, escalation towards the other, all the other uh, gullies. In these funny days of Covid, and this is not normal Jamaica, this is not normal Kingston, but this is the right time to do something like this. Don't sit on our, on our hands and wait for the problem to reoccur or um, be too busy to accept the kind of assistance that you guys are providing. I think that done right, this can be one of, one of the showpiece projects for the ocean cleanup. Uh, but the real um, beneficiaries are the people of Jamaica. And I'm excited to, be, to, to witness it. I'm excited to, 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 to see the, the process and the rigor to which um, you guys are applying to this project. It's something, the discipline, the skill sets, the, the, the hardware that you guys um, bring to this initiative extends far beyond the Kingston Harbour or even the ocean cleanups mandate. It's something where we at the Monet Geomatics Institute and our different partners on this ocean cleanup activity appreciate the kind of um, project discipline the ocean cleanup has brought to this thing. And that is something just by observing you guys, we can learn and we can apply it to many different areas of our operations. As always, the problem is bigger than we thought, right? My takeaway is that, all right, we are on the right track. I'm ready to come back with way more information, with way more data and more confidence that uh, we, we made the right decision for this particular location. And yeah, and that, I think this is what motivates me. I go back to the Netherlands and I, I know now which gullies are the most polluted and what are the biggest contributors and exactly, actually this is exactly what we need. I didn't see this coming. <laughs> Why do we need to wait until all this trash, all this plastic goes to the ocean before we do something, before we clean it? <laughs>